Queensland. We decided to do a little bit of road trip this time. So we left yesterday morning, uh, travelled through Chinchilla out to Miles and stayed in Miles this morning, which is this lovely little town that we have behind us. No, it's Mitchell. Yeah, don't worry about any of that because it's actually Mitchell, not Miles. We travelled through Miles and got to Mitchell and that's where we are now. And in Mitchell, they really tried to do a great job in decorating the town. So little things like these sorts of things on the uh, the chairs here where they've taken old farm machinery and put it in for public seating and you'll see on the tiles everywhere you walk through like the big red back that scared Carleen just before this one here on the ground even down to the bins that are across the sides of the streets here you'll see over there they've dressed them up like Ned Kelly so Ned Kelly type bins it is a little bit of a shame though because the township uh, is probably struggling a little bit there's two pubs in town one that we've just walked past here another one further down the street and unfortunately there's only one operational now um, a lot of shops are closing down uh, a lot of local community and we saw in a lot of places as well that um, a lot of volunteer organizations run a lot of these op shops and you know, small community care shops and a lot of them had notices and signboards saying that they've closed due to, to lack of volunteers due to COVID which is really quite a shame because um, you know, the tourism that comes to these towns really does support the local uh, local people and um, unfortunately COVID's taking its toll everywhere around the world at the moment so that's why we decided to do a, uh, an inland trip we're going to go through central Queensland and uh, we'll have some really fantastic shots for you and from there we'll try and support the local communities and uh, yeah happy days so you know how you see in the movies where you've got that old traditional country town and everyone comes to the movies. Well, we've actually just found something just like that right here in Mitchell. You start off coming in off the farm, put your bike in the old bike racks. And then you come across here and this is where you would find out what's playing on Saturday at the movie theater. And then in normal Mitchell tradition, they put in some really lovely seating through here and that leads you to the classic, the original movie theatre ticketing booth. And they've got one of the old reels from the movie theatres here, where yeah, you put your money in through underneath, and then you go in through the left door, and you come out through the right door. It's a really traditional old movie theatre, even down to coming attractions. Now again, unfortunately, it's all closed down, but they've turned it into a museum and library. So, but we're here on a Sunday, so it's a bit chattering, so we can't go in and have a look. But you can see up through the top windows that there's actually old memorabilia. And like every good country town, you've got to have a good, bit of good mad cow. This one's got a bit of indigestion. Got spanners and hinges and a bit of ratchets, springs. Right into it, this cow. Good Aussie cows, love them. Fiddle. 
So in Mitchell, we stayed at the Major Mitchell Caravan Park. So a um, Major Mitchell is another bird that is very much like it's in the family. Um, we decided to stay in one that was an ensuite. So they had like those little cabins. Well, not a cabin. It's just like a little shower and toilet, which was great because the free camps. Well, the fr you know, not free, but um, what do you call it? Just a campsite. Camps, general campsite. General campsite was twenty five dollars, but if you have the ensuite one, it's thirty five. So we thought we would do that. Now that being said, we did go and check out. There is another place that's heading out of Mitchell, going further north, about five kilometres, and it's called Fisherman's Rest Spot. Um, there is just one toilet there, but you're right on the river, and if you want to be away from things, really, really good. Because although this was great we were right next to the main road so there was a lot of truck noise all through the night and things like that but you know great little spot you were 300 meters from the artesian spa but we didn't end up going there because by the time we got here it was about closed and we were already heading off for the day so goodbye to mitchell who knows where we'll end up next stop but next actual probably fuel stop will be charleville so we'll have a look there now we call this a fixer upper however that's the type of place that I would buy to put on a B&B property. So people could come out, have an awning or a veranda out the front. Um, it's got classic awnings on the side, windows. Just absolutely classic. Well, this is truly out back. Dalbadilla Historical Cemetery. And we're a fair way off the road. It's out over that way. And we'll go over. Yeah, I don't know how old this is. We'll try and find some information out on Google. Got your little gate here. Wowza. Could be like the unknown. What have you found, Mark? I kind of think it's a, a site in loving memory of, but that's about all we can see. And they've got the customary steel markers, which are these ones here. Well, it's got a number on it, yeah. C6. And that one's got one over there. C1 and another one behind us over here. Not quite sure what that is. You just spotted it on the side of the road. Well, I more spotted these unusual looking <laughs> non-Australian native plants. And then I saw the sign. But yeah, it's about 50 metres off the road and uh, you wouldn't kind of pick it unless you sort of yeah. happen to see the sign. But really interesting. Little rest stop on the side of the road, about 35 minutes out of Charleville. Just thought we'd have some juice, bit of a snack break. Pea stop for Missy. What do we got here? Welcome to the Mulga Lands. Commonly known as Mulga or True Mulga is a shrub or small tree in the wattle family that is native to arid outback areas of Australia. Okay guys, so we're just driving along and I noticed this little bit of machinery sitting along the side of the road. So road work wise, behind us, which is over the mound here, is a bit of a quarry area. And what they were doing is quarrying all of the natural ground to use on the roads around here. So unfortunately that section there is all collapsed, but that's a big hopper bin. All the aggregate and all the rock and dirt and soil and everything goes into that hopper. Then it would go up a conveyor and through separators, which are like large steel plates with big holes in them. And the bigger holes, the bigger rocks fall, or the smaller rocks fall through, and it goes down to smaller and smaller and smaller. So underneath here, we've got bins. So that's the first hopper bin, second hopper bin, and the third chute. And the larger rocks would come out there, medium sized rocks, and then the smaller rocks and gravel out this side here. And then underneath that is a collection area. So you'd have an excavator come in and just scoop it all up as it comes through, load it into trucks and disappear out on the road to do all the road work. So rather than trucking in tons and tons and tons of gear, they'd use local resources to do that.
Charleville for lunch and we found this very cute little park called Graham yeah Graham Woodhill Park Memorial Park and it's got it's huge it's got lots of areas we found a nice little spot that has roosters <laughs> And we've got ducks and chickens and we've got turtles. Turtles are around here. Not with Mark, but they're in, in over here. He's very noisy once we got the camera out, isn't he? And Missy's here having a good time. But it's a nice little spot to stop, very peaceful as we head north to go to Bar Colton. But we're gonna stop, we're gonna see if there's a station there. So stay tuned to see if um, that works out. Let's stop water from yeah. Yeah, so they a flood wall. So you can see the wall running through there, mm -hmm. all the way along through here, and then they built, built earthen walls all the way across there. So that's to you know, maybe stop an extra metre worth of flood water coming through the township. Wow. Like when you look at the height of the wall from here to the height of our car, our car is nearly two metres high. That wall would be about the same height as our roof. So two metres more water would go this way as opposed to in the township. But it's a bit surreal to even think of that considering how dry it is. But it happens. When it floods here, it really does flood. Yeah. It just need rain, not flood. So we've found Orgothello. Orgothello? Orgothello. Orgothello. And we have... The painted water tower. But it kind of looks a bit odd. Kind of old looking. Maybe there's something else around. Let's have a look. Ooh, we see something in the distance. Can you see it in the distance? Minor mishap. Whoops. What is that? That is a giant bale of cotton that fell off the truck. Yep, look how much cotton fell off. Oh, quick, we better go. Cotton gone. Cotton, 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 cotton. Very rare to see. Got a cotton, cotton truck. Oh, that was cotton. Those trucks are actually 108 metres long to walk around. Wow. So 54 metres in length. So to walk around from the front of the truck to the back of the truck and around back to the front is longer than you used to run in your 100 meter dash at school. And it's full of cotton. Wow, sir. Who would have thought the first Quantish crash site? Wonder if we'll find it. That's something to name your town after. Big tourist attraction. First Qantas crash site. I know, what do you have? <laughs> Grasslands at Tambo. Tambo Teddy. That must be why they have the um, Teddy Food Works, Tambo Mill Motel. It's a bigger town than I thought. Oh my gosh, look at how many caravans. They are just lined up. So here's a close-up of some cotton. We've just stopped at a, a um, truck stop. Look at the size of these. If you go, like, they're huge. Oh, it's so soft. And look at the size of that. Wow. And it's pretty thick wrap around it, isn't it? John Deere. So we have found Lara's bushes.
bush camp and it now says 13 kilometres and it had that the office hours were till 5 and we're now at about quarter to 6 because we were a bit later and it has a phone number but we have no service to be able to ring it. So, we're going to punt it. Who knows? Let's punt it. So, and we're driving into the westerly sun. Like, can't see anything. Can't see anything. It's like, okay. Except for the big donger here. Oh, we're going into property. So, here we go. Well, that's all right. Well, we don't need a border pass because we can leave the state. So we found the wetlands and a heap of people and in the background there's like a um, playground which looks like it's been taken from McDonald's. McDonald's don't need it anywhere now. And there are wetlands in the background. Why well, those people just sit and watch in the wetlands? Oh Nothing what we expected. All vehicles must report. Oh no. Well here we go, so we should still be able to get in. Let's see if we can still, yeah, we can still do this. We'll shut the gate. Oh, there's someone there. This is good. There's someone down there still, so that's good. So cattle, shut the gate. This is an electric gate or something like that. That would be great. It was sunset. Here we go. Lady down here. Well, we made it. And you by just? Just. We were apparently interrupting her wine. Look at this. So there's all wetlands here, and there's a thermal pool on the other side. We just make sunset. Oh wow, this is good. Did I do good? We did good. We did good. What's this? We. Well, I found this. Okay. I drove here. <laughs> it's a starting point. Yeah. Like it's a long way to walk. Don't get carrying. Look at this. So they're carrying their bits in. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, we found a spot. We found a spot. We found some grass. Yeah. We cannot believe how busy it is though. It's amazing. Oh, it's still heaps of people down this way. What do you think, Jesse? All the wetlands? Well, good morning. Good morning. How are we this morning, campers? Yeah. We woke up to a lovely sunrise over this way here. Very bright now. To find out that they have some unusual things around here. Off to the sunrise side, you'll see the little tin shed in the distance there. And that's a traditional long drop. And they've set it up with like church pews. where you've got a his and hers toilet lid in the church pews. But the pew really does come out. It's not about her. No, because the pew really comes out well, because even with this nice breeze, it kind of does pew. But beyond that as well is a big dog park area, really well fenced, got some huge logs in there, sort of about half the height of me, that the dogs can run around and play with. Because they're and not we allowed, got... they're not allowed off anywhere else. No, no, duck, no dogs off lead in the main area. And we've got plenty of ducks on the pond. Yeah, and we brought this time we bought these stretches so we're a little bit higher off you can see from missy how high up they are missy was in there and she loved it she's just being a bit needy this morning so this is um bar like barcolden it's about 20 kilometers south of barcolden but it is just gorgeous And over the other side over here is where there's some hot pools. Here we come, Missy. Come on. Yep. And she just stands with me. So we have come to the Artesian Spa. Ooh. 
McDonald's playground. Yeah, with McDonald's playground in the back. Let's go check it out. Pretty cool. Rinse off cool shower. Is it really warm? Really warm. Nice sandy one. Well, that was lovely. It was very, very warm. Um, Probably about 28 degrees in the water, but it's all sand all the way through. It's only about three feet deep. But when you get over to the beware hot water sign, just beware because it is scalding hot. <laughs> really like, hot. Approach with caution. And you got over there a little camp kitchen and everything that you can use. So peaceful. So this is where they've even got kayaks and, and you can take them out on the wetlands. Little frog ties on the roof. That's just too cute. We've stopped because there is a tree of knowledge. This is a tree I've not really seen before. And the tree is inside this, so let's go check it out. It is too. They've made them into wind chimes. You would not want that to fall on you. Let's have a look over here. Unionist prisoners sentenced to May 1891. So the tree of knowledge. I'll read it out because it's far more theatrical for you. This movement signifying the protruding shears up here is in recognition of the small born men and women of the West who moved through their courage, determination and dedication to the principles, objectives and ideals of the Union movement played a leading role in the formation of Australia's labour and political movement, which emerged from beneath this tree, the Tree of Knowledge in 1891, and spearheaded the many reforms which were to result in a vastly improved way of life in And there you have it. And there's a fossil. A real one? by the Southern Cross to stand truly by each other and right to defend our rights and liberties. How appropriate. So we're on our way to Longreach and we came to this little town called Ipcocombe or something and we're heading out and all of a sudden we saw all this machinery and old cars on the left. So we thought we better turn around and do a little still move and turn. It's really neat.
the original Qantas hangar and you can go do scenic flight. And then this is the Qantas Founders Museum Air Park. So something you don't quite see every day, you come to the Qantas Museum to see the big aircraft and all the rest of it, then you drive into Longreach and in the back roads you find mum and the kids out for a walk. And a dog. That doesn't know what an emu looks like. We have literally just left Longreach and complete change of scenery. This is the road um, that we're going to go to Windora. There's a couple of stops on the way, but no big trees. And while Longreach is a great town, there were so many tourists in there at the moment, and every second car is a four-wheel drive with a camper on it. Um, the Stockman's Hall of Fame and the Qantas Museum, while are fantastic, you can't have dogs or anything like that, and it's just too hot at the moment to put Missy like leaving her anywhere. So we opted to not do those. Mark has done them before. Yep. Well, well and truly worth a look, guys. If you if you do get the opportunity and you want to come out for a three or five day trip, um, spend some time in Longreach. There's boat cruises. There's helicopter rides, joy flights. You know the Stockman's Hall of Fame. Qantas Museum is, is sensational. Um, it ranks. We do a lot of museums throughout our worldwide travels, and um, you know it certainly ranks up there. It's a very, very good museum. And um, you know, birth of the Qantas, uh, first ever hangar there. 1920. Yeah, really worth, really worth a look and uh, to get out. But probably one of the key takeaways is, um, you know, if you've got around a little bit and uh, you've done all the major highlights and that sort of things, start headed out of town. You know, go to places that most people don't go. Uh, just be well prepared. You know, like we've told you in the other the other movies or the other um, YouTube things that we've done. Yeah, you know, just be prepared and uh, you know, keep an eye on your fuel, keep an eye on your vehicle, make sure you take care of your equipment and it'll take care of you. Um, but yeah, well worth the trip. And we're continually filling up with fuel even if we're only on three quarters of a tank because you just don't know if the next place might, you know, be closed or something like that. Yeah, you know, contaminated fuel is an issue out here as well. It's not so bad now because there are a lot of people that are travelling. But the condensation that builds up in the diesel tanks due to heat and that sort of thing uh, can be an issue and if a uh, service station that you're counting on to get fuel because you're running low may have water in the diesel and um, that can cause a huge issue for your vehicle if you even know about it so uh, it's well worth staying topped up at the regular used fuel stations here's a few trees beautiful sky but the temperature as well has just skyrocketed we are now 33 degrees celsius so it, oh, 35 and so it was 33 where we were sitting having lunch but wow a little bit hotter so we're driving along in the middle of nowhere and we're an hour and a half southwest of Longreach, and we start seeing all these rocks and stuff on the side that are written like names and all sorts of stuff and there was a sign oh and then all of a sudden we've seen a 44 gallon 4x drum on the side here oh we're gonna drive up to it oh here we go here's more of these rocks so I got the drone up and you'll be able to see what some of the writing in the middle of nowhere oh my gosh it's gonna look cool up here look at this we've just come up here the sun's a bit bright there's a 4x drum up there look at that view And that's where we've come down from. Hey! Hey! We have found minions.
we came a bit further. It looks like a mini air's rock. So we found this little campsite. The sun's just set. So this is um, between Longreach and Windora, but it's about 10 kilometers northeast of Windora and it's called Cooper's Creek and it's a free camp area. There's probably about another six to eight vehicles. And so we're all set up. We've got the swags. We had a drink already. We're on the creek. Look at this view that we're gonna wake up to in the morning. Some crazies on the other side, all lovely. Beautiful sun sunset as well. The only thing that I don't like is the flies, but they're going very soon because I had them covered down my arm. Not happy, Jan. Not happy, <laughs> I tell you. All right, can deal with everything else and no flies. Um, bit hot though. I'd say it's probably about 30 something degrees. Not as bad as Christmas time, but still, look at that. We found an island with pelicans. Well, well, good morning. Taking Missy for her morning walk. Look at that. Isn't it just gorgeous? So, taking this view. We have just left the creek and I couldn't... And, and it's 8.39 in the morning. On a Tuesday morning, didn't want to film it, but we got pulled over. There was a police car coming the other way for a random breath test. I, I can't remember the last time I had a random breath test in Brisbane, but yeah, it'd be a few years back. But out here, middle of nowhere, yep, random breath test. <laughs> and he asked us where we'd come from this morning. We went uh, literally like 100 metres behind us at the creek. <laughs> like, and this is where we are. Wow. I wish we could have filmed him. He wasn't very talkative. He really wasn't. I tried to make talk, but no. Yeah. You're not, are you? 